So this is case um, six, and this is a 60-year-old man with an erythematous plaque on the lower back. And I, I unfortunately do not have a scan of this available yet, so we'll just have to do uh, photos. But I'll scroll through them here. Similarities to the previous case of syringofibroadenoma, which is why I'm showing them back to back to compare and contrast. And I apologize that these pictures are a little bit pixelated. Um, they're from my older files, but hopefully they'll do. Okay, any ideas what this might be? So with this one, um, I think this one had a little bit more peripheral power saving as compared to the previous, and maybe some of the calcium artifacts as well. So I was thinking that fiber at the very end of the cell surface needs to account for our part of the history. Very good, yes. So this is a fibroepithelioma of pincus, which some people regard as a benign variant of trichoepithelioma slash trichoblastoma, and other people regard as a variant of basal cell carcinoma. I believe the WHO currently classifies them as a form of basal cell carcinoma, but there have been plenty of debate about this in the literature. I, I told you guys previously, people love the debate about follicular things versus basal cell carcinoma, probably because there's no perfect right answer and so you can just write endless papers about it and and we'll ne and never have a, a good proven answer but uh I, I was always taught to regard them as basal cell carcinoma but as i've read more about it i think there's actually some some pretty decent evidence that that they at least are maybe they're intermediate between a full-blown basal and a benign hair follicle tumor if nothing else we know that most of the data about these lesions shows that they have indolent behavior um, and there have only been rare reports of aggressive behavior from these. And then you can debate whether that was actually transformation into full-blown malignancy or if it was actually this tumor itself. And uh, I'm going to, if you're watching this online, there's a really nice review article um, about uh, this tumor and about the pros and cons uh, or the, the different uh, um, aspects of, of what people think about it by uh, uh, Dr. Ellen Haddock and Dr. Philip Cohen. And it's a beautifully done review. And I'll put a link down below and I'll send it to you guys um, at UNM as well so you can check it out. And then you can decide what you believe uh, for yourself. So in any case, that's that's what I call it. So now the the main thing though is, is how do we just sort this out from syringofibroadenoma? Both of them have elongated thin strands or cords of keratinocytes that are pink. But the different, and they connect together and they leave islands or windows, fenestrae, right, is uh, I think the Latin for window. So this is a fenestrated pattern that it has multiple window panes. If this, if the dermis here is like panes of glass, and then these little cords are like the window frames, like in a, you know, maybe or in like a stained glass window, if you like. And so I like that. I think that's quite a beautiful analogy. So you have that plus, like you pointed out beautifully, you have basaloid cells making these little buds and tufts that grow off of these strands. And they often get a little mucin and a little clefting around it, just like you'd see in a basal cell carcinoma. And there's a closer look at, um, at those. And I think at least some studies have actually used that, that marker FLATA1, the one that's going to be positive in, um, in, uh, uh, follicular neoplasms, but negative in basals. So the FLATA1 PHLDA1 is the anastomosing strands are positive, but the little basaloid nubs here are negative. Um, and uh, negative staining is, uh, is what you'd see in a basal cell carcinoma, and positive staining is what you'd see in a benign trichoep. So it kind of calls into question, and different people, I think, have taken that data and interpreted it differently. Does it represent a, uh, a transition state into basal cell carcinoma? I don't know. Um, in any case, you can read about it. I'll give you the, the link and you can learn for yourself what you uh, learn about it and decide for yourself. So when I see the basaloid basal cell carcinoma looking little buds in addition to those strands, that's when I call it fibroepithelioma pinkus because people ask me that question a lot. And there's the kind of mixoid mucin rich stroma and the, the clefting around the edges that you often see focally. And these are classically uh, most common on the trunk, particularly the lower back. Um, also, uh, interestingly, on the, the sole of the foot. I've never seen one in that location, but it's been reported that when you, you know, you don't see basal cell carcinoma very often on the sole of the foot, nor do you see hair follicle tumors there very often either. So uh, I don't know exactly what that means, but I th thought it's interesting that that is a, a described alternative site in addition to the lower back um, that I learned about when I was reading about it. So.